Uh, good morning to everyone. Welcome to the class again. Uh, we have earlier discussed the access to justice and then uh, we had also discussed on how legal aid has become integral part of access to justice. So this is Dr. M. R. K. Prasad, uh, Dean Faculty of Law Goa University and also the Principal of Sri Lankar Law College Goa. What we are going to do today is that we are going to do the second module on the same series that is uh, how the legal aid uh, has developed from 1970 till 1976 to become integral part of access to justice. In the previous class we have discussed the developments of uh, legal aid uh, prior to 1970. So what we are going to do today is that we will do oh, and learn, we will we'll have a, an exciting class uh, discussing on access to justice developments particularly in the field of legal aid between 1970 and 76. So what is the objective of this class is to basically look into various committees reports including the export committee report on personal justice to the people which is one of the comprehensive uh, what you could say as a, a report on uh, how do you do legal aid, how do you offer free legal aid and what are the components of free legal aid. And uh, we also look into the Swaran Singh committee a report which ultimately led to the 42nd amendment and it is very interesting to see that this this is the time where the legal aid was made as a uh, uh, as a constitutional obligation for the state under article 39a though under article 22 uh, a limited extent of free legal aid was provided to uh, the persons who are accused of an offense who are arrested However, the general terms of providing legal aid is not uh, mentioned uh, in spite of several judgments under Article 21 by the Supreme Court. So therefore, it is very interesting that we will see how the different developments in the field of access to justice led to this great constitutional amendment uh, that is 42nd amendment. Uh, as we already discussed and we went through several modules on access to justice, now you fairly uh, understand that the access to justice is a mandate given by the constitution and that mandate could be uh, in fact uh, you could see under article 14, article 21 and article 22 and many other articles talks about it. So the uh, though the uh, access to justice is part of constitutional mandate, uh, the access to justice concept was uh, particularly in terms of legal aid was rooted by the Bombay Legal Aid Society's initiations and further it was strengthened by the Bombay Committee report as well as the West Bengal Legal Aid Committees. Uh, further there are uh, several reports for example the 14th Law Commission report which is the first Law Commission report on uh, legal aid and there are many other initiatives from both central government and state governments strengthen this concept of legal aid. Uh, further the concept of legal aid which was developed till 1970s by these committees was taken to the next level uh, between 19 to 1970 till 1976 and the notable contributions comes from again Justice Krishnayar uh, through experts committee report and the most significant I would say um, a step towards securing free legal aid to the people came through the 42nd amendment which inserted article 39a to provide uh, uh, offer free legal aid to the people both in criminal as well as uh, civil cases. The another notable development came when uh, the administration of justice was shifted to concurrent list thereby both state as well as the central government was allowed to make legislations uh, which would have a greater impact on uh, providing free legal aid to the people. So this is the slide which shows uh, what we are going to discuss. Basically uh, in this class we are going to discuss the Gujarat committee report, then we are going to the experts committee report, then we will look into the Rajasthan committee report, then we will look at national forum for the lawyers uh, which ultimately led to the Swaran Singh committee. And then the Swaran Sim Committee's recommendations, the 42nd Amendment has come into picture. So this is how this class would be 
looking at. So let's talk about first the Gujarat uh, committee report. Though it is a state committee report, but uh, it is a very, very comprehensive report on uh, how legal aid should be provided, how you could secure free legal aid. So 22nd June 1970, the government of Gujarat appointed a four members uh, committee under the chairmanship of Justice P. N. Bhagavati. This committee discussed at a greater length about the legal aid in both civil as well as uh, criminal cases, even in case of revenue matters, labor matters and other proceedings particularly affecting the poor persons. Um, it also talked about person belonging to the backward class, whether the, the how to provide uh, free legal aid. It, uh, the committee encourages the assistance of institutions engaged in law uh, for providing a legal aid. The one of the notable uh, recommendation from the committee is remission of court fees. What it suggests is rather than government paying the court fees to the persons who are uh, filing a case and cannot afford for it, it is better to remit the court fees. So procedurally it is a simple. Uh, there is the once you are entitled for the free legal aid, you are exempted from paying court fees. There is no need for you to ask the government to reimburse that amount. Further, it also recommended uh, constitution of legal aid committees right from the grassroots level up to the high court level. So it talks about taluka legal aid committees, city court legal aid committees, and it also speaks about small causes court legal aid committees and the high court legal aid committees. That means right from the lowest court till the highest court that is the high court level there should be different uh, legal aid committees should be established and further the uh, committee also suggests that all these committees should have a meaningful collaborations with other stakeholders like government the bar associations judiciary law schools community representatives uh, and other stakeholders so that means the committee also recognizes the value of the stakeholders contribution and the another uh, recommendation comes from the Gujarat uh, committee is that they looked at three types of services could be uh, given to them. Number one legal aid which they call as a legal aid proper, second one is legal advice and the third one is preventive service. What do we mean by legal aid proper is that proper legal aid means providing free legal aid to the litigative service. That means when the case was in the court for representation of the client when you are giving legal aid is called as a litigative legal aid. Second one as it, the name suggests legal advice is to provide uh, uh, advice to the uh, uh, clients who are unable to pay for it. Third one is preventive services, basic idea of the preventive services is to avoid the litigation reaching to the court, maybe providing some conciliation uh, between the disputing parties. And it also recognizes that the traditional remedial legal aid program will not be suitable due to poverty, ignorance and non-availability of the resources in India. That means what it looks, the committee looks like earlier committees that providing legal aid only for legal representation, it does not make any sense. Because if you look at the conditions in India, they are, people they require different kinds of services, their needs are different. So therefore, the committee stress more on preventive legal aid rather than remedial legal aid. That means it is better to prevent than providing legal representation at the free of cost. Then the committee also held that legal aid should not be based on class or status. What does it mean means that if you belong to a particular caste or particular class, you get automatically a legal aid. Rather than that, we should look into the affordability of the person to pay for the legal aid. That means the only test that we should look at it is the means test. If a person is unable to provide, uh, unable to hire a lawyer because he does not have a financial resources, that should be a fit case for uh, providing free legal aid. Uh, however, uh, the report suggests that the application of means test 
on, not only the criteria, but also you have to look at the prima facie test and reasonable test uh, to be applied before you are granting a, a legal aid. Then the committee also suggests that the incorporation of panchayat system into judicial system. What, what it mean by panchayat system means there should be an institution of nyaya panchayats for administration of justice in villages. So this is a new concept that the, 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 the committee has brought in. Like how a panchayats are working at the grassroot level and brings the true democracy, a similar line there should be a nyaya panchayats at the lowest level in the villages. And this Nyay Panchayats would consisting of three members and one of them must have a knowledge of law. And, the, and he would be the chairman of Nyay Panchayat and he should be called as a Panchayat judge. And there should be one Panchayat judge for each Taluka and he would preside over all Nyay Panchayats within the Taluka. And then the committee suggests that the state should create a cadre of this panchayat judges and the panchayat judges from each taluka may be selected from this cadre of judges. If for some reason if the state is unable to create this, then it may appoint some a senior practicing lawyer or a retired judge as a uh, panchayat judge in a particular taluka. This is a novel concept because it provides access to justice at very, very grassroots level where the people are really in uh, need of getting justice. Then as we have seen in earlier cases that most of the time we are discussing that the free legal aid is no doubt that is required for the uh, access to justice, but, but it was not implemented on a fundamental problem of finance. Therefore, the committee suggests how to raise money for the legal aid. So it says you should create a legal aid fund and the legal aid fund should be created from the donations of individuals, association of merchants, traders, manufacturers, charitable organizations, public charitable trust and even it suggested that you could collect the money by organizing entertainment programs by uh, some of the clubs like um, Lions Club, etc. The report also suggests for making such donations tax free and how much the money that you give it to the legal aid, uh, there should be a cap on legal aid, it says that you keep the limit of exemption fairly high so that the people are encouraged to donate for legal aid fund and that would be given a tax exemption. Then um, the report further suggests that the state may issue legal aid stamps with the denomination of rupees 1 and that every vakalat nama should bear a legal aid stamp. The revenue received on this count should be handed over to the state legal aid committee, it becomes a part of legal aid fund. The report also suggested that living uh, legal aid says in all litigations where the financial stakes are exceeding 50,000, this is another innovative idea to generate a legal aid fund. The state legal aid committee also could organize and form a society under a society registration act. The society may be called as a legal aid association and legal aid fund could be raised by the annual subscription from the members who are joining in the uh, society. The report recommended that uh, the following authorities must contribute to the legal aid fund. That means in addition to what we have discussed on funding, there are uh, other authorities from where we could uh, uh, receive uh, money. It talks about uh, municipal corporations, municipalities, district panchayats, saluka panchayats and uh, make a suggestion that these, these uh, authorities should make a, a proportionate uh, contribution to the legal aid fund. So on the whole, this committee has given a few innovative ideas regarding what kind of services that the legal aid should do and how do you raise funding. 